Hi, I'm Tyler Jones. I am a Stephen F. Austin State University and Sylvan's team alumnus, and I am the Conclave Axe Throw record holder. Hi, my name is Luke Bloodworth. I'm the Conclave VP for the Stephen F. Austin State University Sylvan's Club, and today we're going to be talking about axe throwing. Okay, so today we're going to cover a few basic things on axe throwing. First of all, you want a uh, head that is double bit because it helps the axe to rotate more uniformly and helps to add a little bit more weight as well. Another thing is that you want a wide edge on the axe. As you can see here, this axe was thrown lower but still is in the bullseye whereas this one is not. And finally, you want a good quality hickory handle that's going to last to uh, keep from busting if it hits on the hits handle first or flips out of the target, something like that. Okay, the final piece of equipment you need for axe throwing is a target. And Conclave has a few stipulations, one of which is that the bullseye of the target has to be between 42 and 48 inches off the ground, and you need to be from 15 feet. And really, that's all you need for a target. Okay, Conclave rules state that you have to throw from between 15 and 30 feet. And, of course, you want to be as close to the target as you can. So, being as close to 15 feet as possible is very important. And one of the biggest things you can do to be able to throw from 15 feet is have a slightly shorter handle than what most handles got. Uh, this handle is cut down to uh, around 20 inches, and you, the usual range is between 19 and 20, and as you can see, it throws pretty well. Okay, so the length of your handle dictates how many rotations you have on your axe. And uh, this axe is a similar weight and size as the one uh, used before, but has just a few inches longer on the handle. And as you can tell, this axe does not throw near as well from 15 feet. So here is the same axe from 20 feet. And as you can tell, that axe over rotated, so I'm a little bit too far, as well as I was not near as accurate from an extra 5 feet. And again, here's the same axe from about 18 and a half feet. And as you can tell, I got a lot better rotation on that one. So when you order a new throwing axe, you're oftentimes going to get a handle that is too long to throw from 15 feet like this one here. So you're going to have to cut the handle down to size. <clears throat> For example, if you have similar axe heads, it's best to use those so that you have similar weights. And you can see that we have this handle cut down to throw from 15 feet. So to start off with a new handle, you're going to want to throw at that distance and conservatively, because you can't put handle back on, you're going to want to take a little bit off the handle each time. If you already have an axe that is cut to that correct length for 15 feet, then you kind of know the ballpark you want to get this handle into. But again, cut it conservatively, throw each time to see how your rotation is, and then uh, eventually you'll get flush with the target like we want to see. Okay, here's an example of an axe that is way over rotated. It actually causes the leading edge of the axe to be outside, which is no points. Another example of over rotation that leads to no points is a double stick. And because you have uh, the leading edge is technically in, but since it's a double stick, it's no points. Uh, over rotation also can help hurt you to lose points because it could be stuck in the target like this and uh, about like this, where it would be only in the one or two and not in the three. Whereas if it was all the way perpendicular with the ground and parallel with the axe th target, then uh, your edge will completely be used up and will be in the highest point. Uh, under rotation as well can be a problem because as you can see here it can uh, cause you to lose points the same way or it could hit with the handle first and hit and fall back out which is no points. So in review if you throw your axe and you have the axe head at an angle to the target and the handle is pointing out like this the axe is over rotating. So this means that you are either too far away from the target or your axe handle is too short you've cut too much off. What we're looking for is the axe head like this one to be flush with the target and the handle, handle to be pointing straight down to the ground. And then finally, if you, your axe looks like this one, this is an under rotation. And this either means that your handle is too long and you need to cut more off, or you are too close to the target and need to take a step back. As with many events, axe throwing is all about repetition. And first of all, you want to get your stance right. You want to put your feet in the same place every time minimize your movements. 
this can easily be done by just picking a spot in the dirt and throwing from that spot every time. Not walking up, not doing a bunch of unnecessary movements, anything like that. Uh, secondly, power. Uh, you want to be able to throw the axe hard enough to stick in the target, but you're not trying to kill the target, you're not trying to break anything like that, and it actually increases your chance of breaking the axe or messing up the target if you're throwing harder anyway. Uh, finally, your grip on the axe is important as well. You don't want to be gripping the axe up here or uh, different places every time. I choose to grip it from the end every time because it helps with repetition. Uh, finally, you want to be able to line up your axe directly with the target. You don't want it to be off to the side or off at an angle like that because that affects your rotations and how it sticks in the target. Finally, you just want to put all these things together. Okay, I throw one-handed, and in order to get my uh, throws as accurate as possible, my release point needs to be as far away from my body and as close to the target as I can. So, to throw the axe two-handed, uh, what you're going to want to do first with your hands is I put your non-dominant hand at the very bottom of the axe handle and then your dominant hand on top of that. So here I'm right-handed, right hand goes on top. For your feet, I think a stable base is best when throwing two-handed, so I put my non-dominant foot forward and my dominant foot back. And I don't step when I throw. So as you go through the motion of starting your throw, Neither of your feet should lift off the ground, and as you finish your throw, neither of your feet should leave the ground. And if you put all of that into practice, it can look like this. As with every event, practice is key with axe throwing. You're going to be able to practice in as many different scenarios as possible. You're going to be able to practice in different weather conditions, whether it be hot or cold. You're going to be able to practice on different types of targets if possible, whether it be hard or soft targets, as well as you're going to be able to practice with people around as well. Those pressure conditions are what you're going to find in Conclave, and it really helps out on your throwing abilities. Alright, so you set the record in 2019 by throwing the first ever perfect, perfect throw, scoring a perfect 15. What's some advice you would give to people just wanting to start axe throwing? Uh, I would say probably the most important thing for a beginner axe thrower is to choose a style of throwing that gives you a stable base and don't try to mess with the styles that have you taking steps or even taking multiple steps in some cases. That's going to give you a very dynamic throw and it's much harder to consistently practice that kind of style. I got you, that makes a lot of sense. So what's something you would tell someone who's kind of been doing it for a little bit that really wants to get a lot better? I would say, so once, you, once you've got a little bit more experience axe throwing, uh, there will be times in certain targets, depending on the material, where you are wanting to intentionally over-rotate the axe. So I would say for more experienced axe throwers, try to keep your same throw style and mainly start experimenting with your release point. So if you release up here versus down here, that can affect your rotation and it can give you an advantage with some targets. All right, well thank you for all the advice. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so some take home messages from this video. You wanna have a double bit ax, appropriate handle length, and you throw as close to 15 feet as you can. Uh, you wanna be able to repeat those motions of your throwing every time. And you wanna do that with minimal motion and the uh, same power, same rotation every time. Finally, practice, practice, practice. You've got to practice to be good at axe throwing. And uh, I guess that's just about all there is to axe throwing. Uh, thank you for watching our Sylvan's video, Axing.